For today's video, I did some more knife battling in the Craigslist streets for a gaming PC. This time, I spent $400 on a system to see what a $400 gaming system looks like on the used market in late 2021. And it's actually not that bad. Uh, the person that I bought it from is clearly a man after my own heart, and we'll, we'll see why in a bit. But before we get into that, it's time for today's video sponsor, Lenode. Today's video is sponsored by Linode. Linode! Linode. Linode is a Linux-based web hosting service, which according to G2, is the easiest infrastructure as service provider to use. Linode offers a wide variety of products, including web hosting, game server hosting, they can handle any computational load you throw at them. Linode also offers Kubernetes solutions using K8s with horizontal cluster auto-scaling. Whoa, that sounds very fancy. In other news, Linode Node also recently upgraded their block storage volumes with NVMe drives, which means you can get a huge speed upgrade at no extra cost. If the node sounds good to you, use the link in my description below to sign up for a 60 day $100 free credit. Now, external first impressions aren't amazing. It's in one of those hermetically sealed deep cool cases that I hate with the burning passion of a thousand suns. You can see in the front, we've just got like a bunch of tempered glass. And then on both sides, they've got some at least we tried ventilation, but it actually doesn't seem that dense, so it's not gonna be completely useless. Now around the back, things are looking more promising. We've got a very usable rear IO, although that Mesozoic period port is always a bit of a concern to see. But we do have a discreet sound card in here, which always gets my juices flowing, and a Thermaltake power supply. So let's open it up and see, see what's going on inside this $400 Craigslist system. Now the first thing that you'll notice inside the system, aside from the suspicious lack of dead animals in a Craigslist system, is the chonk monster of a CPU cooler, which is actually a Noctua NHD15, a legendary CPU cooler that's cooling an i5-4670K, I think. Massive overkill, but I love that. It means we'll have great CPU temperatures even in this deep cool case. Now the next thing that stands out to me is that the cable management is immaculate for this case. Look at that routing. It's it's genuinely very well done. The only thing that concerns me a little bit is this just huge cable kerfuffle going on here. It seems like what they did is route both of the 8-pin cables through here and kind of strap them together. That's a bit weird. Other than that though, it really is immaculate. Now this massive Noctua cooler is actually hiding the RAM configuration a bit, which is highly unusual. Uh, the person was showing me the system running and it has 17 gigs of RAM in it, which makes no sense. Uh, but we'll have a closer look at that when we remove the cooler after the testing. Now moving down from the weird RAM configuration, we have the Pios de Resistance, which is probably the most offensive pronunciation of that phrase ever. Uh, but the graphics card, which is a GTX 1060. Now, unfortunately, it it is just the loser three gig variant of the card, but you can see that the person has done some amazing zip tie based modifications to this cooler, which I I'm, I'm just respect this person so much for doing this. Actually, let's remove the graphics card and have a closer look at the person's handiwork. If you're watching, random Craigslist seller, I am very proud of you because this is an amazing ghetto GPU cooler solution you've got rigged up here. Uh, the the zip tying job is, is quite smartly done. You know someone's really a pro fan zip tire if they use the age old double zip tie method. Uh, like I said earlier, the only kind of criticism that I have is that you're not covering these heat sinks back here, which actually look like aftermarket heat sinks that have been stuck on here. You can see that like the little heat sinks use just a bit of thermal pad that stick them down onto the chokes. So that's pretty cool. Uh, I'm really curious to see the temperatures. Although on second thought, one advantage of this fan placement is that it does blow down onto the memory modules, which should help keep them cool. And if that was intentional, it's, it's pretty smart. But yeah, I, I can't wait to see what kind of temperatures we're getting with this. <laughs> we're getting with this solution. And then the last thing that I wanna check out before we jump to the future after the testing and do a bit more disassembly of the system is what SSD we have in here. 
Oh, okay. Ne never mind. Uh, so that seems to be, it's just a 120 gig Kingston drive. So purely, purely functional boot SSD. It'll help with speeds a bit. Nothing particularly fancy though. And then in terms of the, the additional hard drive, it is a one terabyte WD purple drive. So, you know, en enough storage to go around. Okay, it is now the future after we've done our testing, and no, I still haven't gotten over this bit yet. Uh, but yeah, we have our PC on its back, so let's do some digging. So they've clearly replaced the stock fans that come with the NHD15. I don't really blame them, you know, poo brown fans aren't really for everybody. Oh, they're actually scythe fans. Clips! I hate you! That is a solid thermal paste application, I'd say. This actually looks like it was recently replaced as well, so that's that's pretty good. Okay, but now we need to check out this RAM configuration, which looks quite concerning. Now this seems to be the main RAM kit. It's eight gigs running at 1600 megahertz from a brand called Avexit. Avexit. There's a lot of plastic still on the heat spreaders. Next, we have a single 8 gig kit of HyperX Red. Wait, it doesn't say it's speed on it. And then finally, we have a single stick of Alpida, which sounds a bit like a Hyundai, like minivan name. Uh, and it's only one gig. So it means in total, between the four sticks, we have 17 gigs of RAM, which is just... That's so weird. But other than that, we have quite a nice motherboard. This was back when Asus still had that like goldy vibe to their motherboards. Um, although, one thing that I have noticed is that it doesn't seem to be screwed down very well. Like, there's there's one screw holding it in here, and then uh, there's no screw there, there's no screw there, there's no screw there, there isn't one over there. Uh, there isn't one over there either. Uh, there's what looks like half a screw in there, because it's not fully threaded down. So that's one and a half screws, and then there's a... So there's two and a half screws holding this motherboard in place. This this person is just David building PCs. Like, I don't understand how they're building PCs as similarly as I do. But with that, I think we can head back to the past and see how the system runs. Now, in terms of Windows, it is very boring. We just have the standard Windows bloatware on here. Nothing exciting like McAfee or whatever. Uh, although the person did say that they installed all of the drivers, including like the sound card drivers and stuff, which is really nice. Moving over here, you can see we have our 4690K, uh, which is a four core, four thread CPU. These are actually getting real long in the tooth these days, but we'll, we'll see how it holds up in terms of the gaming performance. And then moving down, we have our 17 gigs of DDR3, which is amazing. Uh, you can see. Down here, we've got our, our random one gig stick. Uh, they're actually all running at 1333 megahertz, which is, it, it does make sense. That's the base speed for DDR3. But other than that, let's see what kind of gaming performance we get from this $400 Craigslist system in 2021. Now, starting off with a nice light load, we've got CSGO running at 1080p low settings and... Um, yeah, it's running well. We've we've got solid gaming performance. You'd hope that it would run CSGO well. There's no input lag. It, it feels really nice and responsive. This is a solid CSGO gaming experience. Oh, that was a that was an amazing kill. Although those GPU temperatures are, are already not very promising. 75 degrees Celsius with 50% utilization is is not ideal. Now, in terms of Fortnite here, running at competitive settings at 1080p, uh, the CPU is struggling a bit. We've got 100% utilization on that. Uh, although we've got 83 degrees Celsius on the GPU already. I've only been gaming for like two minutes. That's not promising at all. So we're gonna have to we're gonna have to play around with that case fan on the graphics card zip tie implementation. Uh, although, at least the CPU temperatures are immaculate. We are already seeing the, the GPU throttle here, despite the fact that it's only sitting at about 50% utilization. I mean, I don't know what the fan speed is. Okay, wait, let me actually try summon. Because considering our 15 degrees Celsius ambient temperature, like, we should not have it throttling at 50% GPU utilization. Okay, let's see what this does. Oh, wow, that made a huge difference. We have dropped a significant amount of degrees. Um, it, it's way cooler. Uh, it, it's obviously more audible now, but 
you know, I would take 56 degrees Celsius and a slightly louder graphics card over a quiet graphics card thermally throttling at 50% utilization. Like, uh, this is definitely the better route to go and yeah, there we go, that's pretty good. After a long Fortnite session, we're at about 58 degrees Celsius. That is without particularly high GPU utilization. So let's try something a bit more demanding. Here we have Battlefield 5. This is 1080p medium settings, and we're seeing very similar behavior to what I saw with an i5 in a, in a recent video with Battlefield 5. It's just pegged at 100% utilization and that GTX 1060 is having to wait around quite a bit. So this is perfectly playable, but it's definitely not an ideal gaming performance. So I think the next thing that we need to do here is uh, actually overclock the, the 4690K a bit to see if we can get better performance. Uh, and considering that we're just running at 38-ish degrees Celsius, we definitely have some temperature headroom to utilize. A few moments later. We're now sitting at 4.6 gigahertz. You can see that we've gained quite a lot of temperature on the CPU, although it is still nice and chilly. Um, but yeah, it feels good. Uh, we're, we're occasionally jumping into, into 100 frames per second now, which is which is exciting, the game feels very playable. Now to give you a bit of a less vague result, in my standard Battlefield 5 benchmark, the additional gigahertz overclock took us from an average of 66 frames per second to an average of 79 frames per second, which is a pretty big improvement for like three minutes of effort. Now, while I was digging around in the system, I decided to also test a just less ridiculous RAM configuration, so I dropped in a 16 gig kit running at 1600 megahertz, which gave us an average of 90 frames per second, which again is pretty big. It just shows you again, don't play with your RAM configurations, kids. More RAM isn't always more better. So with that, I think we need to jump over to a just an even more demanding game. Okay, uh, Cyberpunk running at 1080p medium, I think, is... This is not great. It's it's not great. Um, have they fixed Cyberpunk yet? <laughs> I, I don't actually know. I haven't tried playing it in a while. We keep running into that CPU bottleneck. Now this is with... A, this is with an overclock on the CPU. Let me see if dropping the settings helps. That's a bit better, I guess, but it still feels quite sluggish, like you're gaming in treacle. Hmm, let's try drop the resolution a bit. Okay, let's do 1600 by 900. It honestly doesn't look much worse at all, and it's running way better. So, okay, never mind, never mind. If you, you know, add a push, you can definitely play some... Uh, some, some cyberpunk on this PC, which is pretty cool. That's exciting. So it seems like in late 2021, if you keep your eyes peeled, you can get a reasonable $400 used gaming system. Let me know what you thought of this system, its performance, and if you've been able to see similar deals in your local area. Thank you very much for watching. And until the next video, bye-bye. <laughs>